this week's video, we're going to be looking at a complete edit from start to finish of adding a canvas texture to any image in Photoshop. It doesn't matter what process you use to create these, the main thing is that you enjoy creating them. In real time, this image took 2 minutes 47 seconds to create. After that, I just left the document open and dropped in more images, adjusting the layers to get the final image that I was after. That's how quick it is. So now let's look at the entire process. So what we do is we open up our image, the choice of image that we are taking, and in this case, I'm going to work with this one. First thing that we want to do is we want to level this out. So if we go into the Crop tool, go into Crop Overlay, take Angle, which is a Straighten tool, it's just really a spirit level, and take the longest straight edge that you can find in your image. If it was that, which I know isn't straight, but I would take a straight edge from there. But in this case, the longest straight edge I can take is from here, just holding the mouse down, clicking there, and then dragging to the end. Now, if you look at this before I release it, you'll notice that there is a slight bow in the table anyway. So it's not going to be the straightest, but it'll give you the idea of what to do to straighten horizons and water and everything. Let that go, and you'll notice it straightens it. The crop, I am not going to affect in this one, so I'm just going to leave the image like that. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to balance out the image. So that's us have the image set up ready to edit in Photoshop. So the next thing we do is we right click on the image, edit in, and Adobe Photoshop 23 or 24, whatever's on your system. So now we have the image in Photoshop. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a copy of the layer and that is Control or Command J. So we now have this copy here. And just so that you guys can see this, I'm going to right click here and make it red. So that's the layer I am working on, the red layer. So we now have this. Now you can add a canvas texture in Photoshop, but it's not the best of textures. So I've downloaded a texture from Unsplash and I'm just going to simply drag it and drop it onto my screen. So you see it opens up here and it's got a big cross through it. That big cross signifies that it's going to be a smart object. I'm going to hold down Shift. Instead of just scaling up like that, I'm simply going to hold down Shift and drag out the edges drag them out to about there and then click OK up here and now we have the canvas texture. Now you'll notice that this has appeared as a smart object. I don't want it to be a smart object just now. So where it says the name of the creator of this and you can see it's found in Unsplash, I'm going to right click and rasterize the layer. That removes it from being a smart object. So we now have this. In Photoshop, we have layer blending modes. So I can go into the opacity and turn the opacity down and there straight away you have a canvas texture. And you can see your image showing through this. We can also go in here, which is the layer blending mode. So what you have to do based on your image that you have taken, you have to decide which one is best for your image. Now that what looks and works okay. I prefer and quite like this one. Although that this one here looks like a better texture, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to work with multiply. And then I'm also going to turn down how much effect it has on it. So you can see that, I can still see everything, still see it's a photograph, but we have a texture through it. But I don't know if you notice, I'll just move this out the way. And pin that up here. I haven't scaled it properly. So at this stage, if that happens to you, click on it, go to Edit, Transform, and Scale and just grab one of the handles and it will scale it up for you. 
so now it covers my entire document now i quite like that at that that's a good one for me because of what i'm going to do to it so as i say you can choose whatever one you want in here i can see a lot of people going for soft light it's entirely up to you i'm going to leave mine at multiply i prefer the darker look to this the next thing i am going to do is i am going to copy this layer here and to copy it i can either press Control or command j or i can drag it down to plus which is down here and it copies it so you see i now have two copies so i've got that copy there it's 67 percent multiply and i've got that copy there it's 67 percent multiply on the top layer i am going to sharpen it slightly and i'm just going to use a very simple sharpening method to do it i'm just going to get into filter sharpen and unsharp mask and what this will do is this will sharpen up some areas of this so i can adjust this i can go right up to here watch this image here and watch your canvas this is the preview enabled if you if i unclick preview watch what happens here see there is a very slight difference so look for one that's non-destructive to your image see the canvas texture is becoming really strong now and i can push the threshold levels as well and that will soften it back down but don't just look at the larger areas look to see what it's doing in the smaller areas as well so i'm going to drag that back a bit and now it doesn't have just as much effect in there and it's not too bad in there but i may want to push the radius a wee bit there and it's caught everything there so i'm quite happy with that unsharp mask at this i'm going to click ok so you'll notice if i turn these off my image is still quite dark and for the fact that i've added another layer on top of it it is going to darken it down do you notice the darkness in there and then darken it again so we have to edit this to make it lighter from the point of view i want more light in it but i also want the texture in it as well so i'm basing this on putting the texture in first and then editing the image so what i do now is i go to the top layer and on my keyboard i press shift control alt and e and what that does is that combines all of these layers into one layer if i turn them off you'll notice that this is what i'm left with if i turn them back on and turn that off i can adjust the layers individually but we are going to be working with this layer here layer two which is i'll just put the caps lock on shift or shift command alt e that's that there right with this layer selected you'll notice it goes a light gray i'm going to go to filter camera raw filter what this is is this is very similar to lightroom but it's just camera raw if you ever open up an image without getting into lightroom and it's a raw image and you have photoshop or lightroom installed it will boot up this editor here it is very similar to lightroom and what it can do is just laid out slightly differently so I'm now going to adjust my exposure and everything again. Am I quite happy with that? At the moment, yes, I am. I'm going to zoom this out so as you can see the next thing that I'm going to do. Zooming out, I'm just going to go Control or Command and Minus. And that's going to take it out to there. Now, you'll notice I'm editing on a white background and that is simply because i want to see how much contrast i have in my image it might be set up at the default there so if that's easier on your eyes work on the light gray but how i brought that up and changed that was by right clicking in here and i can go my default white light gray medium gray dark gray black and to be honest most of the time i wouldn't edit against black because when you print something it's printed onto white paper 
uh, most of the time. So you want to see the contrast that your image is going to have. That's why a lot of the time you might see these videos me working against white. But for this one, so that you can see it and it's not too bright, I will go with medium grey. Now that I've zoomed this out, I'm going to go into the masking tools. And I'm going to click that there. And you'll notice that this pop-up window appears. So we have objects, brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, and range. And that's color, range, or luminance range. So the luminance range being the brightness. For me at the moment, I am going to mostly work with the radial gradient in here. And I'm just going to add small pockets of highlights. So if I click that, and you may not need to do this with your image. I just want to do it with this one. So I've got a highlight coming in here, so I'm going to go about there. This is the default settings for everything. I haven't touched a thing. Show overlay is clicked at auto and the overlay is the red, which means that's where it's showing you where it's going to be affected. And you'll notice that there's a feather in there. I'm not touching the default settings at the moment. So as you can see this, I'm going to turn off show overlay and I'm going to adjust the exposure just slightly in there, just to about there. I'm then going to create a new mask. And again, I'm just working with radial gradients. I'm going to put a slight one here on this handle. Now, how you do this is you just drag it out with your mouse. Once it's dragged out, you can actually go in here and move it around wherever you want. So I'm just going to put it there in the handle. This one I'm not turning up to 10 because it doesn't need to be. I'll maybe go about five there. I'm also going to put one here. So create new mask. Radial gradient. And I'm going to put one there, but you'll notice there's a shadow in there. I'll show you how to deal with that in a second. So I'm going to lift the exposure in here as well. Just that's it. Just that slight exposure. I may not even have to deal with the shadow in there. So my final one is going to be up on this rose. So I'm going to zoom in slightly and it's Control or Command Plus. I am going to create a final mask for this. This is me just editing the image. Radial gradient and a very slight mask on the rose. This exposure may only be about 0.2, not, not even as much as that, because if I go there, ah, maybe a bit there. 0.2, yes. Uh, I'm going to lift the highlights slightly, but not much, by four. So I'll zoom back out, Control and Minus, Control and Minus. I've zoomed right out now, and this is my final mask for this. In here, you have different effects that you can add, and one of the effects you can add is vignette. Now, I'll show you vignette first. Vignette can be found in effects, and if I drag that back, you get that effect, and you can see it, and if I drag it forward, you get that effect. Now, I'm not the biggest of fans of the vignette that's built in, so this is how I create my vignette. Go into Create New Mask. Choose Radial Gradient. Drag it right out beyond your image. Way beyond your image. So it's now covering the entire image. So if I turn the exposure down, that happens. If I turn the exposure up, that happens. What I then do is I click this here. Now this is invert the selection. So now the area in red, which I may change to green just now to let you see it, I think it will show up better, it does, yes. So that's just the color to the indicator. So that is now the gradient I have, the vignette I have, sorry. But if I want to lessen it, that's eating onto the image itself, I can just drag it up and drag it up. I can also move it so that perhaps the rose is in and we've got the vignette at the bottom. I personally just find this more controllable than the vignette that is in, built into Lightroom, uh, to Camera Raw. I can zoom out further. That was Control or Command and Minus. Drag that up, drag that up, and I'm going to leave it about there. So that's us. We've got this far. I am now going to turn the exposure down. Now, if you find that a little awkward trying to visualize it there, zoom in, which is Control or Command Plus. Right, I'm going to take it to the extremes. You see how it's hardly affecting it? 
but at least it's still affecting the image. Now, it's just a preference of mine, it's subtlety with this type of thing. So but if I don't think it's dark enough, I can always zoom back out and bring it back in. I can also work in here and add more blacks to it, and you'll see it getting a wee bit darker. But that, for me, affects too much of this in here. So I'm going to bring it back up to there. I can bring the shadows in as well. I just watching how it affects your image. Take it away there. So it's actually affecting everything that's in green. If I show the overlay, it's actually affecting everything that's in green. I'll turn the overlay back off. So far, I am quite happy with it. And I'm going to click back up here, which is back into the editing. So this is the masks, this is the editing. And I'm going to fill the screen Control or Command Zero. So that's what we've edited so far. So now I can decide, do I want any more light anywhere on this? And for this simple exercise at the moment, I don't. I'm quite happy with how it is. It is. So I'm going to click OK. So if I put that layer on, that layer on, and that layer on, this is what we started with. There. That's what we started with. We then added a texture layer. We then unsharp masked a texture, texture layer, which you don't have to do. And then we went into camera raw. So we now have this. Now you can finish it at this if you want. I have one more thing I want to do with this. As I say, you can stop at this stage, but I have one more thing that I want to do because I quite like this effect as well. I have another image from Unsplash, which is just a texture, but I'm going to put that over it. But the reason I'm putting this over it is because it'll add extra depth to the image. You do not have to do this. So as you can see it there, it's got a slight canvas. It's like an old ruined canvas as well. I could have used this at the beginning, but because I normally do this kind of thing, I prefer adding this at the later stages. And you right click here and take it away from a smart object. That there indicates it's a smart object. Right click, rasterize layer. I'm now going to find a blending mode that I quite like for this. Soft light. Soft light's the one that I'm going to go with. So I'll fill this up in the screen. So you can see I've added that there and it just adds like an old look to the canvas or to the image. But it's too much. We're at 100% here. So we've got this image here. We've then added that. I'm going to drag this back a bit. I just want everything subtle. For this, you don't want it to be in your face. And that's me down at, let's show you, at 47% just so that you can see the differences. So if I turn that off, see the difference it makes? And it's only added subtly. But where it makes a massive difference, watch where the rose is and watch the background in the rose. You see it helps bring that to the fore. So I'm going to leave it at that. What we do now, that's us. I'm quite happy with this. Even with that mistake there, I'm quite happy with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go File, Save. And that's all I'm going to do. And I'll show you why I've just hit File, Save. What that's done, because we started in Lightroom with that image, with that image, and you'll notice two of two and one of two here. We started it in Lightroom and the workflow for Lightroom in Photoshop means that when you hit save in Photoshop, if you've started an image in Lightroom, it brings it back into Lightroom for you. So from here, I can then export my image. And in here, as you see, if I right click in this gray, I can go white. And then I can press F in my keyboard, zoom it out a bit. And there's the final image.